Hello, and welcome again. This is Sandra Hart at Life Over 60. Today, it's going to be a very fluid conversation. We're going to be talking about certain things about Arthur, and I am going to be also talking about a little bit of optimism and my exciting trip to the thrift shop. Sometimes I think that the hardest person to really get to know is myself. Why is that? Is it because I'm always learning and searching and discovering new pieces of who I am? And thank you so much for stopping by. It's always wonderful to see you every Tuesday. So thank you so much for taking the time to just click and join me for a few minutes. And if you are not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you push the subscribe button and also the little bell so that you can be notified when I put up videos every Tuesday. I have been asked a lot of questions on my channel and sometimes I have time to answer them and sometimes I don't. But basically lately most of the questions I've been asked are about Arthur. How is Arthur and are you going to be doing any more interviews with him? Well I really have to tell you, you know, that Arthur is a very private person. He's not a public person and the only reason he was dragged into this channel is because I asked if I could interview him. And because of that, I know he's gotten a lot of fans. But Arthur is going on to 96 now, and he would rather just stay out of the limelight. So I doubt if I will be doing any more interviews with Arthur. He just wants to be able to just relax and enjoy his life every single day. And I know you're all probably very disappointed, but I, I just don't see in the near future if I will be uh, bringing him and dragging him in front of the camera again, unless he asks for it, unless he really wants it. So that's one question that somebody, that a lot of people have asked me a lot of time about Arthur. Also, when I've been thinking an awful lot about life and things happening in my life, things happening in your lives, and, and the world around us. And I thought, you know, it is so hard today to be optimistic, isn't it? I mean, I think I'm a very positive, optimistic person, but sometimes life just gets to me. And it, I think it's really hard every day to just to be in this state of euphoria and la la la, everything is so great. But I've been thinking about maybe things that we can do. If you're having something in your life that is stressful and you're not, you're thinking about the future every time you watch the news and you think, woe is me. And I was just trying myself to do these things so that I can keep my positivity and keep my optimistic outlook on things. And the first thing I thought of is notice all the good things that are going on around you. And surely in our everyday experiences, usually there are a lot of good things going on around you. Just take notice, whether it's your beloved pet who, who wakes you up in the morning by licking you on the face or, or looks at you with those big, big eyes saying, I love you and what can I do for you today? I watched something yesterday about animals and the, the people that are studying the psychology of animals. And they said animals really have been bred throughout the centuries to be able to please us. They have a sense that they can look into your eyes and almost 
feel what you are feeling. They did a study and they put uh, two bowls of food out and they had a dog on a leash, you know, standing in front of the bowl, cut it, about, maybe about four feet away from the bowls. And someone was standing behind the bowls. And that person, their master or mistress, pointed to the bowl that they wanted them to go to. And every single time, the dog knew that that was where that they should go, even though they hadn't been trained that way. So look at the good things in our lives, our families, our health, our children. Just try to concentrate, I guess I'm saying, on the positive in our lives. And that's one way that you can, we can all try to be optimistic. And, and um, train your mind that you can believe you can make things happen by being positive. Try to get rid of that negativity in your mind. Say, oh, you know, I'm too fat. I'll never be able to lose weight. Or, oh, I'm too old. I'll never be able to do that. All of that, that um, negativity that perhaps throughout the years because of bad things have happened to you, you train your mind to think the worst is going to happen. And that's just habit. And that's just a... A, a, a cerebral training that you have done throughout the years. So try to train your mind, and I do this a lot. You know, I'm trying to say, you know, even though X, Y, Z has happened in the past, I know that in the future it's not going to happen, and I know that all good things are going to come. So that's part of trying to be optimistic. Another thing that a lot of us are guilty of, we blame ourselves. We play the blame game. We blame ourselves for things that have happened in the past. Don't we? I mean, we're all probably very guilty of that. So quit blaming yourself for past things that have happened because that is out of our control. That is done. We did that. It happened. There's no way we can reverse it. So stop hurting your positivity by blaming yourself for things that, that at right now you have no control over at all. And that will help to trigger more positivity and optimistic things about things that will happen to you in the future. And when something good happens, give yourself credit, will you? It's okay to pat yourself on the back and give yourself credit when good things happen. And maybe good things happen because you've been able to make it happen. Maybe you're helping your children. Maybe you've done a project or maybe you've done something really good. Even if you cook and you make this delightful dinner for everyone, pat yourself on the back and say, you know what? I have skills. I can do this. I am... Um, I can take credit for this and I don't have to feel guilty or feel that I am being a narcissist because I believe I did a good job. It's okay to feel you did a good job. Even if you're a great grandmother, it's okay to say, hey, you know what? I am the greatest. Give yourself a little bit of credit. And the, the, the probably the final thing that I want to talk about with optimism is remind yourself that life is not static. Every day is not every day. It's the everyone is different. But remind yourself that if something has happened to throw you for a loop, whatever it is, if it's with your health, if it's with your finances, if it's with relationships, whatever has happened to you, remind yourself that setbacks are temporary. Setbacks are temporary. I have had 
a lot of wonderful things happened to me in my life. And my kids said, you know, mother, you're so blessed. You're so, but they don't remember. <laughs> I have had a lot of setbacks. I have had things that threw me for a loop and I just didn't think I was ever going to get off of my knees. And I couldn't see in my, my little small world, I could not see that this was ever going to end or that my life would turn around and it would be good or that this situation would end and I would be able to go on and, and fix it or have a better life. I think probably that's the most important thing about trying to, how to be optimistic is to um, remind yourself, whatever is going on today, it is only temporary. So in this crazy world that we are living in, I think maybe that's something that we all, no matter where you live in the world, no matter what circumstances you have going on around you, trying to keep your optimism probably is one of the best things you can do today. And now, <laughs> this is going to be a you know mixed up conversation here video. I am going to share with you a really exciting week that I had. And that was my daughter and I found a Goodwill that was only oh, about 20 minutes away from us. Now, I have not been thrift shopping maybe since 2018, I think that long, because I, I didn't have a thrift shop close by here, but every time I went to visit my daughter, Brett, in Chicago, we would always go thrift shopping, and I've done a couple of videos on those experiences in Chicago, and I might put them down below. But anyway, we went thrift shopping and I had the best day ever. I felt that I was in heaven browsing through all of the clothes and it was a goodwill. Um, I basically was only looking for tops. I mean, there were dresses there. There were a lot of things there. I did find one dress that I'll talk about, but basically I was looking for tops. So I browsed around the tops and I found some beautiful things. I found a sweater by Ralph Lauren. Now I took a picture, but this picture, there was water dripping from the deck upstairs and from my garden. I don't know when I got a little drip on that sweater in the picture, but it's, it's only water. It's not a stain. I got a beautiful sweater from Ralph Lauren and I got a red check Blouse, blouse from Talbot's. It was just really great and it. it'll be great to wear with jeans and with one of my white slacks, but I just love it. It was nice and colorful. I got a orange checked blouse from the loft. And I also got, again, you know, in my boho style, I found a beautiful print blouse from Anthropology. And down here, I when I go to the thrift shop, especially in clothes that I wear down here, they either have to be cotton, silk, or linen. Because anything polyester really is so hot that it makes you perspire and it's just uncomfortable. But the natural fiber clothes are what I need to wear down here. So I was basically looking for brand names and natural fiber. And I also got a blue checked blouse by Ralph Lauren. And also, I got another blouse. I got a white blouse from Banana Republic. Now, the white pants that I'm wearing in these pictures are from Walmart. They only cost me $12, and I bought them online. But they're so comfortable. They have a, tie, they have a belt loop or a drawstring, and you can wear them however you want. But I just absolutely love these $12 pants. And um, I got a... It's a um, camouflage print, but it's done in blush colors, and they are from Anthropology. Now, all of these clothes, I also got a dress that I'm showing you. It's a no-name dress, and it was in a large, and I don't take a large, but it was linen, and it had embroidery on it, 
and I really like it. Now, I didn't iron it. It should have been ironed. I didn't iron it in this picture, but I wear it with my gauze skirts, and I can also wear it with my uh, pants, and I can wear it with my leggings. And sometimes it's really nice just to have a nice airy dress, but it is 100% linen. How much do you think all of these things cost me? $50. And I got a senior citizen discount with them because I'm a senior. So all of these things cost me $50. So I thought, I'm going to see how much they would be retail if I bought them retail. So I took time and I uh, looked at all of these things and I got them online and things that were similar by the same um, brand names online. And if I would have bought all of this, all of these things retail, and that's excluding the linen dress. Oh, I also bought a beautiful Tahari full cashmere three quarter length sweater. And I just didn't happen to take a picture of it, but I'll wear it sometime and, and show you. But anyway, all of these things retail would have cost me $937. So I thought, okay, what if I went to Poshmark, ThreadUp, uh, Real Real? What if I went to the other resale sites that are online? About how much would I have paid for that? So I went onto all of these sites and picked similar uh, blouses and tops and pants that I thought might be very close to what I bought at Goodwill. And that would have been $125. In the end, Goodwill <laughs> was the winner. I can't believe that I got all of these wonderful clothes. And of course, when I bring them home, I always wash them and I have the type of front load washer that will also sanitize everything. I feel that when I, I like the thrill of going to the thrift shops and finding a bargain, <laughs> that's number one. I also like to save money. But in the end, when I buy, uh, re uh, when I buy a uh, secondhand, uh, either from Poshmark or from Goodwill or ThreadUp or Real Real. When I buy something that has been used, I know that it's in small, some small way, I am saving the planet. Have you ever seen some of the stockpiles of the clothes that are, that are discarded and, and pushed down into the sea or burned, getting, giving pollution on, throughout the world? That's why I do not buy fast fashion. And that is why I only buy also not polyester uh, products. I try to buy as many cotton, linen, and um, silk things as possible. That was my fun day. I was so excited and Brad and I are planning on going back maybe in a couple of weeks to see what we can find. And it's just fun. We had a nice lunch. And it was a good mother-daughter day for us. Life is good. And try to keep being optimistic no matter what is going on in your life. This was kind of a hodgepodge today video. I, I covered a lot of different things. But if you want me to do a question and answer video, uh, just put in your questions to me and I'll try to put that in my schedule of videos. It's always so wonderful to see you. Uh, I really enjoy every single comment that you bring to me. I try to answer all of the questions that you ask me. And um, it's just so nice having you in my bag of marbles. <laughs> Please have a wonderful day today. Be kind to whomever crosses your path. And of course, let's all share the love and pray for world peace. Thank you again. You all mean so very much to me, honestly. Take care and I hope to see you next Tuesday.